Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit on uh, some things that some of you guys are wanting to learn how to do. And I thought what I would do is just kind of give you just a little bit of an idea of where to at least start. And, of course, the first place is with a degree wheel. You've, you've, got, to, uh, you've got to do the degree wheel uh, on your cylinders. Uh, you, the first thing you got to do is you've got to mark with a Sharpie where you want your exhaust cut to be in at the degree you want. Uh, when you get that exactly where you want it, and, and you mark down the sides of the port so you'll know not to go wider than the ring pin. Uh, you've got to stay inside the ring pins. If you're going to go outside that area, you're starting to get into a danger zone, then you need to find the generation three of the G4 cylinder that has the... Uh, the, the center bar in it that will save your rings if you're going really super wide so always keep that in mind if you're planning on going super wide wider than 33 34 millimeters then you really need to find one that's got the center support for your rings otherwise uh, stay inside the ring pin uh, marks that you make on the cylinder you should be great same way on the intake side. Uh, keep it, keep them inside the ring pin where they where they go up and down, and, and everything will be just fine and copacetic. Now, once you've got your mark inside for your exhaust and what you're wanting it to read, uh, like this one, I marked it at 178 degrees with my sharpie, and. And I verified that twice before I pulled it off of the uh, off of the engine. So then you start your porting. Now some of you do all your porting, which is fine, with one that's that is a fine tooth. If, I don't know if I can get that to focus on it or not, but you can see that it's a uh, it's a pretty fine deal. Then they have one for specifically for aluminum that, as you can see, is a lot uh, rougher cut. If you've got a lot of metal to take out, and I do sometimes, I will you start off with this one to get it down real close to where I want it to be. Then when I get done with that one, then I switch over to the fine one to get it down, and it's and it ends up nice and smooth. Uh, this one you have to with the fine, you have to run it at a slower RPM, or you're just barely touching it because if you really get into it very heavily, this thing will cake up, and then you've got issues. But you, there are ways around that. You can soap it. Uh, I use my engine stand that I've got here. Uh, I just take it down while it's running and run it along the sides of that steel and it knocks all that off so that I can continue. Okay? Now, I've got it cut to the to the 178 where I want it. That's what I like. I, I, I've got everything just the way I want it on that exhaust side. So then... All I got left to do is grab the little uh, buffing wheel, or not buffing wheel, the uh, uh, very fine sandpaper wheel on here. And I'll put that in my porting tool. And then I run it in here to smooth it up really nice and smooth so that I don't have to worry about uh, any uh, rough texture. Okay, then I'm, I'm pretty much done with, with the exhaust. Uh, then I've got to do my intake, uh, which normally I'll do at about 31 degrees width, 32. And uh, this one happens to be a third transfer. So everybody's always asking, what do you do about a third transfer? 
Well, first of all, you got to have a drill press or a mill. Uh, one, I mean, you, you can't do this. You can't do that with a hand drill. Uh, you're going to destroy every cylinder you've got, more than likely. But takes a much bigger burr, much bigger. And that's what I use, uh, that right there. I use it in my drill press. I get it set with this uh, cylinder setting just where I want it, uh, up and down wise on the, uh, on the platform on the drill press. And then all I have to worry about is, is running this against the cylinder and up and down just a little bit to, to take out what I need to take out uh, and the width that I want. Uh, on this one, I go on, on the G4, I go uh, three-fourths of the width of the port that I that is cut. Uh, my third transfer will be three-fourths of that width. Okay, then the boost port, uh, which is actually just the top of the third transfer, uh, I will make it half the width of the intake port. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's half the width of the intake port. Now, once I get that done or, or started, Width-wise, then I have to determine where to stop going up into the cylinder for that third transfer top or boost board, whatever you want to call it. But no matter what, do not take it higher than the top of your transfers. I repeat, do not go taller or farther up into the cylinder than your transfers. Preferably just a tiny, tiny bit below the top of the transfers. But in this case, I, I got all I could get. It's, it's level with the transfers, okay? Uh, this one's cut just about as far as I could go except for raising the exhaust a little more. Uh, this one is a 178-120 uh, with the third transfer cut in it. Uh, that's about all I'm going to do to it, except may, I may round the, the edges of, uh, of the transfer vein that's in, in the middle. Uh, I may round that up a little bit, but other than that, uh, once everything else is cut, then I'm going to grab the infamous gumball hone that some people don't like. And I run it in here to eliminate all the little burrs. Uh, because trust me, those gumballs will take out every little burr. It'll be just as smooth and uh, it, it'll also give it a nice clean finish. Uh, you can't bore with it. No, you can't bore with the gumball home, but it will allow you to get the cylinder uh, smooth. Uh, and then all you have left to do is to go back to the degree wheel, put it on, get your final readings, write them down if you want to, so you'll know just in case you decide to put it on the shelf and do something with it two months from now and you're going, what the hell did, what was those numbers? Well, there you go. Now you got them. Uh, I'm not going to say this is helping a lot of you, but it's a good start if you want to get you some burrs. Get the aluminum uh, uh, burrs and then get the steel burrs get you a big set of these uh, sanding uh, rubbers along with the, 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 the sanding pads. Uh, you'll need a ton of those. 
And then once you got to where you've got these all figured out real good, then get you a drill press, a mill if you can afford it, and get you a nice big half inch burr and a steel burr. And then you can learn to do a transfer, do two or three of them on garbage cylinders. And then once you go, damn, I like the looks of that. There you go. Then you're ready to start doing your own third transfers. Uh, and that's really all there is to doing a third transfer. The, the nice thing about it, once you get one of these done, and then you come across a case reed lower end, and you want to use it, all you have to do is get that intake burred up real nice and tough inside, rough, really rough texture. I mean, really bad rough. Fill it smooth with extra high heat JB Weld. And to do that, all you have to do is, is duct tape this side so it's nice and flush. Turn it over and start filling the intake with that high heat JB Weld. Uh, don't fill it up into your third transfer. Stop at the bottom inside of your third transfer and then you can either bake it, let it do its own natural thing, which is really the way to go, uh, is to just come back uh, tomorrow and pull the duct tape off, check it. Uh, if, you, if you've got a little mess up in here, uh, these burrs will, will take that JB Weld and do a really nice smooth job on it. Then you can actually use the buffing uh, sanding wheel on it, get it smooth. You have a perfect Case Reed G4 cylinder. Okay. Guys, I've talked about all I can talk today, so I'm going to call that quits. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I may uh, see if I can actually do another cylinder or two today. It's cold as all blue blazes, but uh, that's okay. I'll fire the burner up. <laughs>